What's up guys, I'm Rasim from RossmerTech.com and this is another tutorial in Swift programming. Now in this class I'm going to show you guys how to create an array. So let's get started. Now what is an array? An array is basically a variable that has more than one value and these values are indexed. So and I'll show you how to create it. The way we create an array, we're going to type in VAR, right? This is a keyword to declare a variable. We're going to call our array whatever we want. I'm going to call my an array or variable red. And after our variable name, we're going to add this colon. So then we're going to hit space. Then we're going to tell it what type of data we're going to have in this array, whether it's a string, integer, double. And I, in this array, I'm going to create a string. So we're going to type in capital S, lowercase t, r, i, n, g, right? Then uh, open, close bracket right next to it. So then we're going to hit space. We're going to use this equal symbol, hit space, another open and close bracket. So this is the structure of our array. This is how we created an array. We start out by typing VAR, or it could be a constant. It could be LET. But if you create a, a constant, an array, it can't be changed. Whatever you create, it's, 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 it's basically not going to change at all. So with this VAR, it, it, we can change it and modify it later on. So we, we type in VAR. That's the keyword for creating a variable or an array. Hit space, we give our array or variable a name, right? I call mine red. Next to our uh, name, we, we add this colon, right? We hit space, we gotta tell tell it what type of data we're gonna be using. In this array, I wanna be using string, so I typed in string, so capital S T R I N G. Right next to our data type, we use this open and close bracket, right? Then we hit uh, space, then we use this equal symbol hit space, then another open and close bracket. Now in between this open and close bracket, this is the last open and close bracket, we're gonna type in all our values that are gonna be indexed in this array. So our first value, right? Uh, since it's, this is a string, we gotta make sure we use a, a double quote, a set of double quotes. In between this set of double quote, we're gonna type in our first string value, and I'm gonna call this uh, tree. So our first string value has a uh, string value of tree. So uh, this is indexed as zero, by the way. The way that uh, arrays are indexed, it starts with zero and it goes up. So the first one is indexed as zero. The way we add a second one is after the, the double quote, we add a comma. We add a comma to separate the different uh, values. So after uh, this comma, this is gonna create another string value. We have to add another set of double quotes. So in between this set of double quotes, I'm gonna add my next string value, which is gonna be indexed as one. And this value is going to be a car, a string value of car. So now we have two indexed. Our first index is zero and our second one is indexed as one. Tree is indexed as zero and car is indexed as one. So we can add a third one. After the double quote here, we can add a comma and we're gonna add our final one. We, you can add as much as you want. It doesn't make a difference. And uh, since again, this is gonna be a string, so we're gonna type in a set of double quotes. In between the set of double quotes, I'm gonna type in another string and I'm gonna call this one man. So now I have three value, oops. Uh, let's see what I did here. Okay, I gotta add this double quote at the end. All right, so we have three values in our string, right? Uh, our first value is indexed as zero. Our second value is indexed as one, and our third value is indexed as two. And these are string values. First one is tree, second one is car, and third one is man. So now, how do we um, invoke and how do we modify our array? First, let's invoke it. I'll show you how to invoke it the individual indexes. So we're gonna use the print line method to do that. So I'm gonna type in P-R-I-N-T-L-N, open and close parentheses. In between this open and close parentheses, we're gonna type in our variable name, or our, our, sorry, our, we're gonna type in our array name. So our array name is red, right? Then we're gonna use this open and close bracket. Inside the open and close bracket, we're gonna type in the number of the index that we want to, to uh, invoke. So I'm gonna invoke tree. So tree is indexed as zero by default. So I'm gonna type in zero here. So we're gonna print the value of uh, our array with the index of zero. Our index of zero is tree. So let's press play, see what happens. I'm gonna hit play here, build succeeded. As you can see down here, it printed out tree. So that's how we invoke the individual index. So again, this is indexed as zero. This is indexed as one and this one's indexed as two. It starts from zero, it'll always start from zero. So now let's print man. Man should be uh, two, right? So, because this is zero, this is one, and this is two. So let's type in two here so we can print on man. So now let's hit play here. Build succeeded, and it printed on man. So that's pretty much how we invoke uh, the different indexes. We can even uh, manipulate them. We could change the value. So we can say um, red, open a close, brackets, right? We can say red two, 
is now equal to string uh, bird, right? So it's going to change uh, our uh, index to bird. So we're going to hit play here. Build succeeded. And it and it's still printed on man, right? But let's delete this line of code here because this was above the our code here that we manipulated that and we changed it to a bird. So let's use the print ln here. Open and close parentheses, right? Oops. Open and close parentheses. And again, we're going to type in our variable or our array name that we want to print out on the screen. And our array name is red. And we're going to use this open and close bracket to uh, so we can... Uh, print the individual index and we want to print index 2 because we changed it to bird now right so let's see if it prints bird so let's hit play build succeeded and it printed out bird now remember the, uh, it didn't print out bird before because uh, the way that the program works it, it runs line by line since uh, the print this print line was above uh, this statement here where I, where I changed the value of uh, our index 2 to bird that's why it printed, still printed on man because over here we did, we did, we uh, added man, but after uh, we added this print line under this statement, then it printed out bird. So that's that's how we manipulate the different indexes of the array. So now let me show you. Now I'm going to show you how to find out and how to print out how many items are in your array. To do that, we, we're going to use another print uh, line or print method. So we're going to type P R I N T. Open and close parentheses. Inside this, open and close parentheses. We're going to uh, type in our, our array name, which is red, right? And then we're going to add this dot. And then we're going to type in count, C-O-U-N-T, right? So this is going to print out the, uh, the exact number of values we have in this array. So whenever you add dot count after your array name, it tells you the number of values. So let's hit play here. And, and this is going to just print out the number of values. So let's hit play. Build succeeded, and it printed out three, right? So we have three here. We added three values up here, and we just changed the uh, man to bird, but we still have three values. We have index zero, one, and two. So that's why it printed out three here. So that's how we uh, print out the, the, the number of indexes or the number of values in an array. We just add dot count after the array name. So now I'm going to show you guys how to find out if our array is empty, and it's something called dot is empty. And I'll show you how to do it right now. So let's just delete this print line here. Let's delete this uh, statement here. We, we don't want to change to to bird anymore, basically. So now what we're going to do is we're going to start an if statement, right? We're going to say if red dot is empty, basically, right? So is, if red is empty, then we hit space here. We're going to add this open and close curly brace. In between this open and close curly brace, we're going to hit enter a few times. Basically, if red is empty, if the list has no values, it's going to do whatever is in this if statement, right? So it's so I want it to print out something. So I'm going to hit tab here. Then uh, I'm going to use a print statement. So we're going to type in P-R-I-N-T-L-N, open and close parentheses. In between this open and close parentheses, I'm going to type in a message. So we're going to use a set of double quotes. In between the set of double quotes, I'm going to type in empty, E-M-P-T-Y, right? Oops, Y. E M P T Y. So if it's empty, it's going to print out empty. Else, uh, I'm going to type an else here. Hit space, open a close curly brace. In between, I'll open a close curly brace. We're going to hit enter. Else, we're going to print something else. To speed up the process, you could just print out if the print thing here. It saves time. Instead of typing it, I'll just press copy. Then I'll just paste it down here. So then I'm going to type in uh, not empty, basically. If it, if if it's not empty, it's gonna print out not empty. So right now it's it's it has value, so it should, should print out not empty. So let's hit play here. Build succeeded. Not empty. But th that's how we test whether or not uh, an array is has value. We use the, the array name dot is empty, right? We we can create basically an if statement or whatever type of thing you want. And uh, I created if statements to to, uh, to let me know if it's empty or not. If it's empty, it's going to print out empty. If it's not empty, it's going to print out not empty. Because basically, if it's empty, that means it's true. Then it's going to do whatever's in the if statement, right? 
But since it's not true, it has value, it's going to go jump straight to the else and it's going to print out it's not empty. So that's how we got that there. Now we can add a new item to the array by using the append uh, method. So I'll show you how to do that right now. So let's just delete this if statement here. So the way we add a new uh, item to the end of the index is by typing in our array name first, or our array name is red, right? Then we're going to type in dot append A-P-P-E-N-D. And it should give you an example here. So let's just click on the example it gives us. Double click it. Now it's asking us for a new element, colon T. So we're going to delete whatever is inside this open and close parentheses, right? And uh, we're going to add something. So we want to add uh, a string value, right? And we're going to add another uh, string to the end. So we're going to say house. We're adding something to the end of the array, basically. So now we started at zero. Tree is zero. Car is one. Man is two. So at the end, it should be uh, three. So house should be three. So the way we add again to the end of our array or our index is to use the dot append method. We type in our array name, dot append, open and close parentheses. Then we inside the open and close parentheses, we type in the value you want to add to the end. So let's, let's test it out. Let's see what happens. Let's first print, uh, so let's, let's see if it added it. Let's print the value of the index. It should have been index three, basically. So zero, one, two, and this one should be three because it's going to the end. So let's print ln, open and close parentheses. Inside the open and close parentheses, we're going to type in our uh, array name, which is red, uh, open and close bracket, and our index number, our new index number should be three because it added else to the third at the end. So let's hit play here. Build succeeded and it printed out house, as you can see down here, because this we added it to the end of the index. By using the uh, dot append, open and close parentheses, adding the value, that's how we add it to the back of the index. All right, now I'm gonna show you guys one final thing, how to retrieve the value of an index and save it to another variable. So let's just delete this here. Let's just delete both these lines of code here. So now uh, the way we uh, retrieve data is uh, to create another variable first. So we're gonna type in VAR. VAR is a keyword to create another variable. We're gonna call our new variable blue. And we're gonna say blue equals, and our, our variable name, or our array name red, right? Oops. Our array name red, open and close bracket, and the index number that we want to save into our new variable. So let's uh, type in zero because I want to transfer the value of index zero to our new variable blue. So that's how we transfer values and add them to new variables. We can do that all in the, this line here. We type in var, our new variable name equals the name of the uh, variable or the name of the array open and close brackets, and inside the open and close bracket, the index that you want to transfer the value to. So let's hit play. Actually, let's first um, let's first print the value of blue let's just see if it, the transfer happened or the transfer worked. So we're going to use a print line method again. So P-R-I-N-T-L-N, open and close parentheses. Inside the open and close parentheses, we're going to type in a variable blue to see if it has the value of uh, index zero, which is a string value of tree. If the transfer was successful, then it should print out tree. Let's hit play. Build succeeded and it printed out tree. So that's how we transfer over values of an index to another variable. Basically type in uh, var space, the variable name equals the array name, open and close bracket, and between the open and close bracket, the index number of the value that you want to transfer over. All right, so that's pretty much it for this video. If you guys like this video, please give me a like. If you want more videos like this, please subscribe to my channel. I'm Rissim from RossmerTech.com, and thanks for watching.